Section 1.4, the tangent and velocity problem. So this is sort of a reiteration, what we did yesterday. So the tangent problem, but I'm going to uh, look at this a little bit in more detail. So the tangent problem, suppose I have here some function relative to some coordinate system. And suppose that I want to determine, uh, if you keep zooming in, so let's suppose I have some point A here and I keep zooming in closer and closer and closer to this point. As I keep zooming in, so if I zoom in here, I see that my function looks like this. If I zoom in here closer, I see my function looks something like this. As I keep getting closer and closer, my function looks closer and closer to a line. This line that it looks closer and closer to will be called the tangent line. The tangent line for this function, y equal f of x, at this point, A. The tangent line to the curve, y equal f of x, at the point x equal A, is the best linear approximation to the curve, y equal f of x, at the point x equal A. We're going to need to discuss what we mean by the best linear approximation. This will take uh, a few weeks to discuss that. About a week or, let's say a week to discuss that. So the first thing is, well, rather than try to answer this question, which is really too difficult to answer, maybe what I'll do is instead look at something called a secant line. A secant line, to the curve y equal f of x at the points p and q is the following. A secant line through the points p and q is a line through the points p and q such that the points p and q both lie on the curve y equal f of x. And so the secant line is just this line through these two points on the curve y equal f of x. So this line here is my secant line. Well, that's just a regular line. And I know how to determine the slope of a line through two points. And so the slope of the line through the points P and Q, I can determine that change in y with the change in x, uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that's, that's easy. That's intermediate, that's elementary algebra. And, well, maybe you don't know this yet, but we'll discuss it. If somehow I can take the point Q and make it get closer and closer to the point P, until it's actually right on top of P, then the secant lines will get closer and closer to my tangent line. And so the limit as P approaches Q of the slope of the secant line between P and Q will approach the slope of the tangent line at the point Q. Oh, I guess I'm letting P approach Q. So I'm actually letting this point P here get closer and closer to Q. As it says, let it. Okay, so we'll need to somehow discuss what we mean by this limit idea. But this idea of a slope, we know that. So we're able to 
really answer this question. But once we know the limit, then I'll have no trouble with this idea of, a of finding the slope of your tangent line. Next, the velocity problem. Well, I can certainly determine the average velocity. When you look at, uh, let's say you're, you're in a car and you wanna figure out how fast you're going. Well, I can't figure out your actual speed, but I can figure out your average speed. You know, at one point in time, you're at a particular point. Uh, one minute later, you're a mile further away. So you're going one mile a minute. So I can figure that out. Or maybe in an hour, you go 100 miles. So you're going 100 miles an hour. So I can figure that out. But the question is, well, at this instant in time, how fast am I going? Well, I don't know. Um, you're going, you know, some instantaneous velocity, but I don't know what your instantaneous velocity is. But if rather than, you know, measuring in one hour, and then, you know, I get the average, your average velocity over that hour is hundred miles per hour. Maybe you're going faster, slower during some particular time. Or if I may measure it in a minute and you want one mile a minute. Well, you know, again, you could be slowing in, uh, down and speeding up during that one minute, or I could do it per second. You know, you did 50 feet in one second, or I could do a fraction of a second. As I keep getting closer, you know, smaller and smaller time intervals, then that should be closer and closer to your instantaneous velocity. That's how they um, figure out your velocity, your speed in a the car. They just measure it every time your, your wheel goes uh, one revolution, they figure out how far you've gone. And so uh, they give you this average velocity, which is very close to your instantaneous velocity because they're letting that interval of time go to zero. So again, I have this pesky little concept of a limit that keeps creeping in. I can determine my instantaneous velocity by taking the limit as delta t approaches zero of the average velocity over that interval delta t in time. Okay, good. So let me do an example. Determine the slope of the tangent line to the curve y equal x minus three squared when x equal four. Okay, so let's do that. So I have here the graph of x minus three quantity squared. We just graphed that 10 minutes ago. And so um, if you remember, it was just, oh, actually this is kind of nice. It was just a translation where I translated uh, the uh, problem y equal x squared by three units to the uh, right. right to get a uh, the graph. Oh, I don't of, have to play. It's not a big deal. OK, the I graph just... of x minus 3 quantity squared. <laughs> OK, so. <clears throat> Are you good? Now, I want to find the slope of this tangent line. Well, I can't really find the slope of this tangent line, but maybe what I can do is look at the slope <laughs> of a secant line. And so I take this point here at four, and I take another point, I don't know, let's call it X. And let's find the slope of the secant line through the points four, F of four, and the point X, F, f of x and so well you know what the chain i was listening to that song when i realized i woke up late for class okay <laughs> so this is the point here x of x 
Okay, so <clears throat> let's find the slope through this. So this we recall that the slope. That's fine. So the slope of a line is just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, so long as x1 is not equal to x2. So we're going through two points. So my points are, well, for f of 4 and x f of x. Oops. And so now let's find the slope. Well, the slope is f of x minus f of 4 divided by x minus 4. Let's do, um, here is, let's call this x1 y1, and this is x2, y2. And you plug into the formula. Okay, good. And so the slope of the tangent line is just going to be the limit as x approaches 4 of the slope of the secant line. Well, we know the slope of the secant line. We just figured that out. And so it's the limit as x approaches 4 of, well, the slope of that secant line, f of x minus f of 4 over x minus 4. So let's do this. Well, f of x is x minus 3 quantity squared. And f of 4 is, well, 4 minus 3 quantity squared. 4 minus 3 is 1, and 1 squared is 1. x minus 3 quantity squared by the special product formulas, the perfect for a trinomial formula, is just x squared x times negative 3 times 2, negative 6x, minus 3 squared, which is plus 9, then minus your 1. 9 minus 1 is 8. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches 4 of x squared minus 6x plus 8, all divided by x plus 4. I can factor x squared minus 6x plus 8 as x minus 4 times the quantity x minus 2. The x minus 4 is cancel. So this is just the limit as x approaches 4 of x minus 2. Well, as x approaches 4, x approaches 4. As x approaches 4, then x minus 2 approaches, well, 4 minus 2, which is 2. 